So the CCXP was this past weekend, which included a Game of Thrones experience, which included the showrunners D&D, Maisie Williams, and John Bradley doing a panel. So this video, I want to recap the Game of Thrones experience at the CCXP. I feel like I said Game of Thrones so many times in a really short amount of time. Warning, there are minor spoilers in this video, but nothing groundbreaking or super revealing. But the warning is there for people that don't want anything known about the final season. Also, there will be a Targaryen history video, hopefully tomorrow, so stay tuned for that. Okay, so first, the showrunners D&D were asked during the panel when they first figured out how they would end Game of Thrones, which they responded, Sometime after we finish the third season is when we knew. Which is a bit intriguing to me because we know George gave them the ending of his books or general ending of his books as part of his agreement with HBO for security measures, like he dies or something similar. So the fact they had to take a few years to decide how they wanted to end it is a bit interesting. Perhaps they meant as in the nitty gritty details of it, because they did say they knew certain things such as Danny would one day cross the narrow sea from the very beginning. The idea that the show could end differently than the books is a fun one though. I know George has been very open that the show will never do a ton of plots he has planned for his books. Hell, some alive book characters are dead in the show and vice versa. And the show has wildly deviated from the books in a lot of places. It ending differently wouldn't be too shocking. Oh, and you may be happy to know that Arya has more major kills this final season, and just not stabbing whites. So at CCXP, Maisie Williams said that Arya Stark has a few more big kills ahead of her in Season 8. Now what are these big kills ahead of her in Season 8? Hmm. I'm still hoping that we see her take down at least one White Walker with a Valerian Steel dagger. Maybe a certain dagger we've all grown to love. Her saying that may also add more fuel to the Arya kills Cersei fire. At the very least, I hope that a few more big kills doesn't involve just whites. I want her to off a main character. Next, Maisie seemed a bit upset when David answered that his favorite sword was Heartsbane and that he has the sword at home, asking, well, oh, then why can't I have Needle? Something tells me Maisie's gonna get Needle now. Though they're probably going to do what HBO has done before, save items to auction off later, likely for charity. So if they don't give her Needle, maybe she can buy it when they do a charity auction for a ridiculous amount of money. Oh, and I'm not sure if John was trying to go for adorable points this panel, but his answer was the thimble that Sam's mother gave him before he left for the wall. God, John Bradley comes across as such a sweetheart. Next, the two actors were asked about their first Game of Thrones memory. John answered, The big table read in Belfast when we got a sense of what a huge deal this show would be. That's when it started to feel really real. Now, Maisie's first Game of Thrones memory is adorable, and I think maybe a bit more special given how young she was when it all started. She responded, Meeting Sophie and having this decade-long friendship with her. Aw, I had to say their friendship is one of my favorite out of the entire cast. While D&D didn't share their first memory, they did share one of their last. They talked about how after 13 years of working on Game of Thrones, they had an odd sensation at the end of their journey, after filming all of season eight. They decided to take a photo of themselves, as a pair, on their final day of shooting around the destruction and ruin. They added that the show was a major part of their lives for a very long time, and it was strange and wonderful to be done. What made it harder was them saying that the crew were actually family to them. D&D repeated an answer to a question they've gotten before, who was the hardest and who was the easiest to cast. They confirmed once again that Maisie Williams as Arya was the hardest to cast, saying they actually saw a little thumbnail picture of Maisie on their laptop while scouting for other actors in another country, and even on a picture that small, there was just something about her that seemed like Arya to them. Of course, Mark Addy as Robert Baratheon was the easiest to cast. We've known that for a while. Which I think there are a lot of people that agree that Mark played Bobby B beautifully and added a new depth to Robert we didn't really get in the first book. I've been sitting here for days! Start the damn joust before I piss myself! Seriously though, good casting for both. But on casting Maisie, there was some fear of her acting ability due to her age. However, any fears they had about Maisie's acting ability and age were quickly gone. DB said on her, I remember at the beginning of the recordings when she was still small and we only had three more minutes of sunshine to record a scene, 
and more than 100 people on the team. She needed to hit first, and that's exactly what she did. I'm still surprised how well these castings were done for the child actors on the show, which so were D&D, &D, if we remember what they said years ago. We got very lucky in casting because it's so hard to cast good kids. Even if they come in and do a great audition, it's so hard to know if they're going to quite literally grow into the parts. With Sansa and Arya in particular, their storylines have become quite dark. It was such a gamble, and the fact that they've both become such great, wonderful actresses is a bit of a miracle. Now, despite her being fabulous, Maisie did admit that the one actor that intimidated her the most was Charles Dance, even though she then added that he was also the nicest person to work with. But speaking of child actors that are no longer children, if you've been hoping for Arya and Sansa to get together, which I've been on some fanfiction sites, so it's a thing. Maisie and Jon were both asked who they would marry if they could marry any character in Game of Thrones. Jon said, predictably, Gilly. So, Boo on him, that was super easy, but he did hilariously offer it certainly helped Samwell that Gilly's only experience of men was Craster. Maisie said, Sansa Stark because she's fit and fierce. I can now see the Maisie Sophie fanfiction writers just losing their minds. And here's a fun fact, unrelated to those two hooking up. The showrunners wanted Snoop Dogg to do a cameo on Game of Thrones. I'm not sure if that would have been epic or not, though. People really bitched about the Ed Sharon cameo, and Snoop Dogg would have stuck out more so than him, I think. Or maybe not, but maybe more people like Snoop than Ed, and maybe then they wouldn't have been so bitchy about it. Maisie and John shared their favorite kills as well during this panel. Maisie saying the most fun she had filming was the Trant death scene because of how involved it was. John simply responded, Randall Tarley is the only name on my list. When asked about how they compared to their characters, Maisie responded, I wish I was more like Arya than I actually am. We look pretty similar. John believes he does relate to Sam and that him and his character grew together. He shared, He's not always the first person to see worth in himself, and that Gilly gave Sam confidence. John then acknowledged on stage that the two showrunners did that for him in real life. D&D &D gave him confidence in himself. It always gets to me that I hear such amazing things about the showrunners through interviews and just what other people have said or little tidbits. And then you always have someone in the comment section of a video where anyone says anything about D&D &D and they go, ah, D&D &D are cunts. And then you ask them, oh, do you have like evidence like interviews or clips or something that shows them just being raging cunts? And then their response is always, just watch the show and then talk to any book reader, they're cunts. So it's always, Oh, you, so you just think they're cunts because you don't like what they did with the show. Cool reasoning skills, bro. I once more feel bad for Joffrey's actor, Jack Gleason, when D&D &D talked about how hard it was for him to play Joffrey. They said he was raised so well and was such a great guy that he struggled with the horrible things he had to do in the show. But because he was such a professional, he was able to. And we know Jack got a lot of shit for playing Joffrey because some people can't separate the actor from their character, which is really sad because the guy seems really sweet. Lastly, the showrunners were asked their favorite houses, David responded House Stark, no shocker, and DB responded the house with the turtle sigil, which was a cute nod to George's own house. Nice to see George getting some love from at least one of them. I know they still had to write a good show, but could you imagine what it would be like if he didn't like the Starks? I mean, both the showrunners hated Stannis in the books, and we all saw what they did to him. So now let's move on to the Facebook Live interview with Maisie and John. Maisie admitted that there are some more big moments for her character in the final season, which lines up with her saying Arya still has some big kills in this final season. And still lines up with my secret wish for Arya to kill a White Walker. They were both asked how they felt about the ending of Game of Thrones. John's answer was a bit more sad. He revealed, I feel like I'm abandoning Sam. Kind of, because I'm never going to see how he is again. Funnily enough, they become real people, and you just gotta hope they're happy. But to know you're never gonna touch base with them again, it's kind of hard. It's a real emotional separation, I think. Okay, him saying he wishes he could go back to that world and see how Sam is doing clearly indicates that Sam makes it through the end of Game of Thrones, which isn't really a surprise, but I don't know, that feels like a slip to me. You can't go back and see if your character's happy, if your character's dead by the end of the series, you know? 
He also talked about while he enjoyed going off on his own and being a main character, he also felt left out from time to time, such as with the Battle of the Bastards. However, he said he wouldn't trade his experience of playing Sam for anything, admitting, You're never treading water with these characters. Every single scene inspires a change in them you never could have anticipated. So to plot these characters' narrative progression over the course of this whole series is really an exhausting job because they're never the same, from one episode to the next. They're learning, they're growing, they're experiencing things, and they're developing all the time, and that's the privilege of playing these parts. Maisie, on the other hand, expressed a happiness for it ending, saying, Doing my last scene was really emotional, but at the beginning of this final season, I said to myself, I'm really just going to make the most of every second, and I really feel like I did. And although it's heartbreaking to say goodbye to Arya, it's so much better than to do something to death and do it until we're all sick of it. All good things must come to an end, and it just felt like the right time. It's really sad saying goodbye to Arya. She means so much to all of us, but it's worth it, I think. So understandably, some actors are ready to move on with their life after spending almost a decade on Game of Thrones and their life revolving around that schedule. Okay, so here we are. Like, subscribe, and let me know in the comment section down below, what do you think is going to be Arya's big kills in the final season?